Good evening once again, everybody. This is Pastor Brad Kloster from Living Word North Church in Bel Air, Michigan. Sure, I'm glad you could join me tonight for our Trials to Triumph. I want to say a welcome to everybody joining us on YouTube or Facebook. Whether you're a part of our church family or not, welcome aboard. Thank you for joining us, and I hope this is a blessing and a help to you. I know that I, for one, am having a blast talking to you about these things, and I hope that this helps and bring, because you're going, I know you're going through something. Every human is going through a trial. Everybody's going through something, whether it's big or little, whether it's, you know, really difficult or mildly difficult, we're all going through something. So my prayer is that through these short little times together, that God can take your trials and turn them into triumphs. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. I love this because we've been talking about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And I am one of those. You are one of those. We both are ordinary people, and God is using us to do great things. And so why not study some of the characters or the, the people in the Bible that are our examples? And the Bible is full of people who really are nobodies from nowhere. And God used them to do great things. And so I want to talk to you tonight about one of my personal favorite characters, and his name is Gideon. And you'll, you'll recognize this. He's found in the book of Judges, and you can read his story. He's the, he's the famous commander of an army of 300 who never had to, they didn't even use regular weapons, man. I mean, they used a torch and a pitcher and a and a trumpet to go fight a war. And God used Gideon for great things. I don't mean to sound like I'm belittling it, but that's the truth. But the thing about Gideon, just like everybody else we've been talking about, is we could easily say, okay, this Gideon guy, just an ordinary guy, nothing special about him. In fact, when we first find Gideon, He's actually doing a job that's intended to be done outside in the wind. He's doing it inside to hide from the enemy. He's threshing wheat inside a wine press. That's not supposed to be how it works. So our very first glimpse of Gideon is that he is doing a job. He's hiding. He's doing his outside work inside so that nobody sees him because he doesn't want the enemy to find where he is or what he's doing. So this is our very first encounter with Gideon. And Gideon are in Judges chapter 6. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him. This is verse 10. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Wait a minute. This is the same guy who's hiding in a wine press. He's not, what, what do you mean, mighty man of valor? This guy's hiding from his enemies. You know, I think you and I could probably identify with Gideon pretty well because I think there are times in our life where we certainly don't feel like we have anything to offer. By all, by all means, we don't look like we have anything to offer. Our life has not shown that we have anything to offer. We're hiding from the enemy. And God shows up and says, you are a mighty man of valor. See, the problem with most of us, if I could say it that way, and why we aren't doing great things for God is because we're looking at our ability and not the ability of God. The reason why Gideon was called a mighty man of valor is because the angel said, the Lord is with you. He wasn't a mighty man of valor because of who he was. He was a mighty man of valor because God was with him. See, that's a big difference. And that's a difference that you and I have to understand. You will never be a mighty man or woman of valor because of who you are on your own. You will be a mighty man or woman of valor because the fact that God is with you. So answer this question for me. Do you have... God with you. In other words, are you born again? Have you been filled with the Spirit of God? Have you been water baptized for the remission of sins? 
These are simple questions. Are you following God? Are you listening to his voice? Because if these answers to those questions are yes, then whether you like it or not, whether you feel like it or not, you are a mighty man or woman of valor because God is with you. It's not because Gideon was anything special. It was because God was with him. And when God is with us, I like to say it this way. If God be for me, who cares who's against me? And this is the reality that you and I need to understand. We need to understand. We need to, to face this head on that it's not about me. It's not about my ability. It's not what about what I can do on my own. It's about what God can do through me. Because if God is with me, he's what matters. It's like having the ultimate teammate. It's like having the very best player by far. It's like having, it's like having a, you know, Michael Jordan play on your, on your junior high team. You know, you're going to win these games. You're, you have the best player by far. You have, you have the ultimate weapon to, to win this game. And that's what God is for us. It's not about us. It's about who's with us. And this is true for Gideon. It's true for me. It's true for you. It's true for everybody that we know. Our power does not come in what we possess. Our power comes in the fact of who comes with us. And that's the power of God in our lives. So next time you want to look at yourself and say, I can't do it. Remind yourself that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And remind yourself that greater is he who lives in me than he that's in this world. That's where Gideon got his strength. That's where Gideon got his valor, his power, his wisdom, everything. And that's where you and I can do the same thing. Because God is on our side and he's with us. Hey, I hope that helped you tonight. Thanks for joining me on our Trials to Triumph. And we'll see you again next week.